Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is good to be in the house. Tater tots and ice cream. Tater tot casserole. Pastor, you remember Jeanette Casuccio? Man alive. She, I thought the, the, the vestiges of Jeanette Casuccio would tell us now. <laughs> but it's so good, right? I mean, that's a great bit, but that'll, that'll keep you full for a while now. You are, car- you are carved up. <laughs> All right, as soon as we get done tonight, we're going to head down to the gym. <laughs> we're going to work that off. Glory to God. Well, I believe the press is going well from, uh, man, from last Wednesday night to Sunday morning. Man, oh, man, oh, man. It is, it is good that... Uh, Good that we're here, and uh, I'll I'll encourage you to make every opportunity that this body offers, like noblemen in the morning. Um, while there are a lot of guys in there that don't attend Heartland Church, it's still a part of our press as the men of Heartland Church. Pre-service prayer on Sunday morning certainly. Sunday mornings is important. It's it's important that we that we show up for this. Well, we're going to receive the Lord's tithe. Josh, you did great. Really did. I man, I enjoy these young people. I do. I do. I do. Second Corinthians eight. Before I start reading that, one of the things that. I've just gotten a lot of little nuggets about the word turn. And Sunday morning, one of those was when a farmer plows a field, he's turning the soil. He's taken what was good last year. Those nutrients have been used up. And it's time to turn the soil, to get fresh soil on top. So for some of us, we need to be looking for areas of aged out parts of our lives that need some turning. And sometimes, I mean, I think we can always re-examine our finances. I always tell people, if you've been, if you've been given the same thing every month, Every week, I'm not saying that you have to give more, but there might be an opportunity to give more. 2 Corinthians 8, starting in verse 10, it says, here's my advice. Okay, It'd be good for you to finish what you started a year ago. Last year, you were the first who wanted to give, and you were the first to begin doing it. A lot of times we start the year out like a house of fire. Now, you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. That's that's important. We don't ever want to pressure you, and you shouldn't ever feel pressured to give more than you're able. Okay? Don't write a check to the church that you can't cash. Yeah, yeah, that's true that the church can't. If you can't cash it, the church can't cash it. (laughs) Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly. Heart issue. And give according to what you have, not what you don't. Of course, I don't mean your giving should make life easy for others, so... Let's say we were going to take a sacrificial offering up for somebody and you knew they needed $10,000. And you thought, well, I've got 100 but I'm going to write a check for $10,000 in faith. I, you know, I'm not going to say that it's not possible for the Lord to lead you and then him drop that money in your account, but chances are give according to what you have, 
what you can eagerly do and don't you don't have to go overboard I don't it, it's a case of not feeling like I have to go overboard and because we're everybody gets excited and a lot of times that happens I only mean that there should be some equality right now you have plenty and can help those who are in need later they'll have plenty and can share with you when you need it in this way things will be equal he's not going to put stress on you in the area of giving it's it's a learned response just like pastor and our detail members they train my knee-jerk response when a financial trouble comes one is to examine my love life two to examine my giving to see is there an area that maybe I haven't attended to maybe there's a field I haven't tilled up in a while but it's never out of pressure it's not ever out of condemnation it's not ever out of a oh man pastors are sitting at that table and they're opening every envelope and they're going huh is that it they don't do that the whole lump is blessed and it's good to be a part of the lump together so we we participate together father i thank you lord for this day i thank you that you've given us the the opportunity to develop a heart for giving I thank you that everything in your word supports just the purity and the love and the honor and the worship that we exhibit through the tithe, through sowing into others' lives. And Lord, the love, the honor, the worship that is involved in receiving as well. We thank you, Father. We are harvesters. You provide seed to us as sowers, Lord Father, and we thank you that we're prepared for the harvest as well. We commit the tithe to you. It's yours. It's the best, the first, the purest lamb that we have to offer from our finances to you. And I thank you, Father, for your blessing on the 90%, whether we're doing 10% or more, Lord Father, that remainder is blessed. And we thank you for just those floodgates of heaven, Lord Father. But most of all, we recognize you and your authority in our lives and in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, a couple of quick announcements. We do have, of course, Nobleman uh, tomorrow morning starts at 6.30, guys. Uh, be here. If you can, by all means, be here. There we go. My Tribe Super Bowl Party. It's going to be the 11th. That should go without saying, but <laughs> Super Bowl's the 11th, folks, if you haven't heard. Uh-oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's going to be 5 o'clock in Heart Rock, so you'll have plenty of time to uh, get home from church and relax a little bit and then get ready. Nacho Bar, so bring a side or a dessert. Quinn and Ian's are going to meet Saturday the 10th out in Heart Rock. Um, that's the day before. It's a party weekend. Bill and Bonnie Adams are hosting, and then Glory Weekend coming March 1st through the 3rd. Please continue. It's good that we pray in our homes, whether you're driving, but the corporate prayer, it moves. It makes way for the turn. If you would, please welcome our pastor, Jason Stutter. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Love you all. Thank all of you. Well, let's lift our hands to the Lord and let's honor his presence. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We acknowledge you right now, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We choose you. We believe Jesus is the Son of God that he came in the flesh died on Calvary's cross to 
redeem us and justify us before God. He was buried and he was raised three days later, ascended and seated at the right hand of power on high. And he is now in full-time high priest ministry to represent all things God between us and our Father. So Father, it's a blessing to know that we have a mediator, a substitute, a go-between, a high priest, an intercessor and an advocate that we don't represent ourselves but our faith connects us to our representative. So Father, no matter how we may feel, we thank you that we are justified. No matter how we may feel, we are reconciled. No matter how we may feel, we are redeemed. We are bought, we are purchased. And your word says, you saw us as worthy and you're not ashamed to call us family. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise tonight. We ask you, Lord God, to impart sow the word deep in our spirit move we're yielded vessels we're turnable we thank you for what you're doing it's all by your love thank you for the major breakthroughs that have already happened in two week period Lord we give you the praise the glory we've come together as disciples all being taught together Holy Spirit we appreciate your ministry and your presence in our lives Thank you for wisdom tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. You may be seated. It's good to be here. Mm. Thank you, Justin. I got. <laughs> Doug's always back in media it's like the first time in years I've seen him out here and Stephanie's always sitting by herself and the other night I saw this man sitting by herself who, who is that I look over my glass oh I, somebody need to tell the homeboy I don't know I, I couldn't see them a blur in my reading glass he needs to know that's a buried one. Oh, it's Doug it's her husband <laughs> oh man isn't it wonderful I'm thankful to be a part of this church family. Man, I'm, I'm humbled that God planted me here. Good to know where you're planted. That's how you, put, you get deep roots in the ground, man. Deep in the soul. You know, the environment of every plant uh, is crucial environment you take a you take a plant that likes low sunlight and you stick it out on your front porch or your back porch on that evening sun you wonder why it ain't growing it ain't in the right environment you take that same plant you get it inside in front of a morning sun window I ain't no green thumb but my me mom was all of a sudden that, that flower starts finding life and shooting roots and turning green and blooming flowers and, and all of us are in bloom in some area all of us are in bloom 
Always remember this. Don't compare your bloom to nobody because listen, part of blooming, part of preparing to bloom is dying. And it's when that flower is dying every year, the blue bonnet, it, it, it casts its seed and that seed falls down into the ground and that seed has its next harvest in that seed by being where it belongs and staying. No matter how dry it gets, that seed stays right there because it knows rain will come, moisture will come. And you don't compare because you can be in a dying season while your neighbor's in a blooming season. And you'll be thinking, what am I doing wrong? I'm going to tell you something. If you're dying to self in any way, you're, 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 you're in good, good hands with all state. I mean, you're in a good, good, good place. Because I promise in those seasons, you're the only one that don't see all your flowers. You just, you just, you just think you're just a tree of dead limbs, like, you know. Harry Potter trees or something. I don't know. I've never seen those, but you're not. Always remember this. If it seems like God is at work in you and it's, it's not something you would call, you would call glorious. It's more of a, uh, a shedding, a crucifixion, a mortification, a putting off, a killing, those are all New Testament words. Never forget that the only reason that's going on is because you've been bearing fruit. Because if that, if you weren't bearing fruit, he only prunes those who are bearing fruit so you can bear more fruit. He's not doing that because you're not a fruit bearer. No. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. You're right on time. I know Jody would agree and, and other leaders would agree. I don't believe, you know, we, this is our life. We think on people 24 hours a day. It don't matter what we're doing. We're, we're thinking. We're, it's part of overseeing. It's part of the grace. It's not something that we do in our own power like your grace gifts and, but you wake up at 1.32 a.m. and you may lay there for two hours and just think about the people how are they, wonder how they're doing Lord I pray for them, Lord I pray for them you know what if we did this what, what? I had something hit me late last night I woke up and went to my chair and I thought you know what if we what if we did this for two months on Sunday mornings. What if we did this? And that might be really, really neat. Although, I don't know. Lord, I pray for them. I wonder how they're... It, it's, it's, it's nonstop. It's, it's what you do. It's, that's, he called it... Uh, he took, he, the word calls it watching out for the souls. Um... So I just want you to be encouraged. I'm saying all that to say, I don't believe we have anybody in the church that's not right on time. There, there's not people in this church that are not doers of the word. I don't believe so. We're all at different stages. We're all at different levels, or we'd say our measure is different. Some of you walk in a, uh, you don't have more faith You've just developed your measure more than others. But there's others that has developed the measure a little more than you. And all of us have different grace gifts so that we are all pieces of one puzzle and we all belong. Some of us are border pieces. We're not the, the thing that the eye is drawn to first of the picture. But without the border, it all falls apart. There's keystone people in here. They build that, that, that header and then that one stone in the middle that they drive down into that V that, that when it's going down, it, it puts pressure. It, and without
about those people. <laughs> all of you have a purpose. You have a major purpose and you all wield uh, a sword in the spirit. And it's important to just trust God and ask him, Lord, I ask you to fill me with the knowledge of your will. Colossians 1, 9. Fill me with the knowledge, intimate working knowledge of your will for me. I don't want to try to do kingdom stuff. I only want to do what you've called me to do right now. If it's make popsicle sticks, that's what I want to do. Because the same good hand of God is on me for making popsicle sticks as it is for the pastor preparing messages. If the pastor's in his calling and preparing the messages. The willing and obedient, at some point they step into eating the good of the land. And it gets gooder and gooder and gooder the more you stay in that willing and obedient place. You just, you, you, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. You can have growth. Let's talk personal life. Jason stuttered. Jody stuttered. You can have growth. Uh, let's, let's say mental, not solo, but mental growth. Mental growth. Such as, and when the, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, one mind. The Spirit of God fell upon them. And, I mean, you just quote it knowledge are you here and not have increase you can have growth and not have increase we could we could listen programs don't reproduce people people reproduce people the pastor does not produce sheep. Sheep produce sheep. So it's important that we all know our role. We could throw a big event and say we're going to baptize alligators in a baptistry this Sunday. I mean the crowd comes. You might fill the parking lot, but that doesn't mean you've had increase. You can do an event and the whole county could come to it. And I'll tell you something. Listen, please listen. I know you are, but oh, listen to this. The book of Acts, the, the birth of the church that we are now offshoot of, in the same branch, same vine, their vision was never growth. It was Jesus. They never once talked about growth. They never had a plan meeting, a program meeting. They never had a meeting saying, how can we win this city? That'll slap your religion around, but that's Bible. They just said, Lord, lead us and guide us. And you told us to be living witnesses, sacrifices, that have been slaughtered but raised. That's living sacrifice. It means slaughtered yet living. Same sacrifice revelations when he said, I looked and there was a lamb that sat on the throne as though it had been slain. A bloody lamb but resurrected somehow too. The suffering servant and the glorious king. And God led them. And sometimes it was to one man at the gate called Beautiful. Sometimes it was sitting on, on, on Solomon's porch and ministering and 3,000 got born again. But their focus, listen, their focus was not on how do we keep the 3,000. It wasn't, now send them all a candle. 
Send all the men some Versace cologne and all the ladies a pretty flower or something. Now, how are we gonna keep all these people? Now, th they did focus on how do we provide for what God's put here, but they did not focus on how do we keep them. That's two different things. One is work. So, let's just keep Jesus as our vision. Keep him as our vision. You know, listen to me. This is Wednesday night, so it's a different crowd, okay? Some people are gonna come in and they're gonna stick like, stuck like Chuck. And they're, that's, listen, for the local church, that's, that's the good stuff. You, you have to have that. Some people are gonna come in and they're gonna be soul, not so, but soul sick, and God sends them here. I was one of them about 23, four or five years ago. She was one. How many of you were that have been here a long time? Some of them are gonna come in and they're gonna get healed and then God's gonna lead them somewhere else. And that's completely wonderful. I, we bless them. And we tell them in membership classes, if we see you in public and God ever, if God tells you to go somewhere else, listen, don't make it awkward. We see each other on the street, don't, oh God, there's just, that, that's religion. That's all that is, is religion. And, and I've he heard ministers outside the church almost talk like, well, you know, they're not in the church no more. All, like, listen to me, just because you don't go to Heartland doesn't mean you're not in the church. This is one local church of many churches that make up the universal ecclesia. <laughs> Uh, now, so some people are gonna come in and get healed and then go. Some people are gonna come in and get healed and be stuck like Chuck. Some people are gonna come in and once relief comes, they're not gonna need God like they did when they needed it. We, that scripture, and they're just gonna depart. We check on, we call, we pray for, now listen, Jesus leaves the 99 to find the one that's lost. Everybody that leaves is not lost. Some of them just went. He did not leave the 99 to go after the one that's been biting and biting and biting and biting on that fence so he can get out of the fence and go. He stayed with the 99. Are you with me, somebody? So we go where God tells us to go. But I thank you for being stuck like Chuck. <laughs> I remember when I was young and man, I was full of some stuff and vinegar, both of them. <laughs> the other side was stronger than the vinegar. Levon <laughs> was looking at me like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, yes, hallelujah, not really. <laughs> she had a little more vinegar in her too back then, didn't we? <laughs> man, I think that's why we got along so good. <laughs> We'd have made a good Bonnie and Clyde, Levana. <laughs> Jody would be our manager. <laughs> well, we'd be the killers and she could handle all the money. <laughs> really. But, man, I was just spitting, boy. I mean, I was, I was laying it out, man. And that was before I had, I don't claim to be smooth now, but I mean, I was, Travis Stretch said, I'm a little rough around the edges. Well, that was my theme song then. And, uh, I was talking about, you know, Jesus had the disciples and he had the multitudes, blah, 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 and I was just kind of getting on to the multitudes and, and the pastor said, son, we need them all, we need them all. <laughs> we said, take up an offering. Son, we need them all, we need them all. <laughs> and you do. You, you need first stringers, second string, third string, and fourth string. You need depth. And I've learned over the years to not wonder and worry about what string am I on. right on time. I tell you, this is such a power. Here's a good example. Darlene Jack. Anybody ever heard of Darlene Jack? She's the one that started the Hillsong. Uh, uh, she is the reason 
that all Americans even heard about what this hill song they'd been in they'd had that church over there for nearly 30 years before you ever heard about hill song and you heard a shout to the lord all the, all those songs that was darling jack nobody knew who brian houston was bonnie houston nobody knew who hill song church was they knew what shout to the lord was darling jack was a third row choir member just faithful to choir practice. And they were going in to record the album and the lead female vocalist got really sick. And the choir said, Darlene's the one. She was recommendable. And she went in the studio and recorded that with the approval of Brian Houston, the pastor. And when you found out about Hillsong was through a third row faithful choir member that didn't worry about what string she was on. She was just there being faithful, praising the Lord. And God put her. And from that moment on, it was like David and Saul. It was like Aaron or, or uh, Tom Brady, a Michigan quarterback, hadn't thrown one pass. Was it Drew Bledsoe? Got hurt. Tom Brady went in. Who's Drew? See, he was just faithful. Listen, he was faithful to stay instant and faithful in season and out. He wasn't after Drew's job. He was just being a faithful. This is what I'm saying. There are crucial moments that faithful, I'm not calling anybody this. I've been, we're all in our growth, walk with God. There's times that the bench warmer becomes the hero of the moment because they've just been available. Fought through all the I'm not worthy, I'm not appreciated, they don't nobody knows. Listen, Eeyore, God knows. He knows. He's the one writing your story, not us, not even you. We've all tried writing our story, we screw it up. God's writing it. God knew Saul was picking that spear up to pin David to the wall. God put him in the room. He don't appreciate me. He's not supposed to, I do. So anyway, you just, you, that, that, that second and third string many times, man, there's a, lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of depth in them because they've been willing to build depth in the local church. They've sat under a lot of word. They've been in a lot of presence. They've seen a lot of change in the church. They've watched it slowly, how God's done it, how God develops. They've, they've recognized, they've monitored. They've watched leaders for a long time. Are you with me? They've monitored, they've taken note and they've just remained content. And boy, when God takes a third stringer from the third row of the choir and pulls them up, you have a person that's been doing it a while and they got depth in them. Hallelujah. Well. So. Our scripture that we've been on, that we're gonna stay on is Philippians 1.19 in the New King James. Philippians 1.19 in the New King James says, let's read this together, ready? For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance, watch the two ingredients, through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. So prayer brings the supply of the spirit. It's always in that order. Prayer brings the supply. He said, I know this will turn. Just to recap, the word turn means to move something. I know that this will move. 
That's good, isn't it? Yes, sir. The word deliverance is the word soteria, or, and it means deliverance, salvation, healing, protection, provision. I know that this will turn for my salvation. The Wycliffe Bible reminder, it says, I know that this shall come to me into health. I know that this will come to me into health by your prayer and the under-ministering of the Spirit. I love that word, the under-ministering. Say that, the under-ministering of the Spirit. The NLT says, I know that as you pray, the Spirit will help me and lead me to deliverance. Man, that's, that's going on here in Harlan. I know that as you pray, the Spirit will lead me to my deliverance. Say this with me. I know that as you pray, the Spirit will lead me to my deliverance, my salvation, my healing, my protection, my provision, my breakthrough. Say it again. I know that as you pray, the Spirit will help lead me to my deliverance. Amen. The Voice Bible, listen to this. I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit, I will be released from this dark place. Man, come on. Say this with me. I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit, I will soon be released from this dark place. Isn't that wonderful? Man, listen, there's no place too dark. That's a fact. There's no place too dark. I'm not comparing my walk with yours because I've never been in your shoes, but I've been in a couple super, super, super dark places. Some of them with the help of the devil I dug. Dark, perverted places. Extremely perverted places. I'm talking about sexually perverted Dark places. Not possessed, but obsessed. Controlled to a degree. And hating every moment of it. You ever been practicing something that everything in you did not want to practice it? Sure. That's the proof that it wasn't you. But I want to tell you something. You get enough light. I, listen, I don't know another way. This is what I'd do. I mean, you, you, uh, you, could, you, you could just give me a subject. Okay, I'm not boasting. I'm giving God's word the glory. But you give me any subject and we'll say, okay, praise the Lord. Let's, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. When I was... I was so, 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 I mean, short fused. Most people didn't know it. I knew it. I never was physical with Jody, okay, at all. That's not even my character. But I mean, boy, I was the black cat in the bag that had just the thread sticking out of it. I mean, short, short fuse. Well, Always remember this. If you come to a place of, I need to deal with that, that was not you that all of a sudden had the bright idea. That was your spirit who has the Holy Spirit, and that means you have a pure heart even though your soul or your understanding or the way you think and process is the black cat. But it's your love for God and the truth that you've been walking in. I didn't say you've been per perfect in it. David wasn't perfect in it, but he's the only man in the Bible called the man that was, he was hard after the heart of God. Even after he killed a, man, uh, killed a husband to get his wife. It didn't change. Listen, he was more harder after the heart of God after that than he was before it. Peter's failure didn't disqualify Peter from the call. And Peter's the only one in Scripture that was called as a human Satan. Now we know that he was talking.
to the devil that was talking to Peter. But still, I mean, when the Lord Jesus, God in flesh, looks you in the eye and says, Satan, let me get your attention. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was so, so, so full of hate and rage, just rage. I did, it, it, I did not like it when anything did not ag agree with me. Because if you didn't agree with my idea, it immediately, somehow in my thinking, you just drew a line in the sand. Are you here with me? And man, then I fought getting in, trying to talk you into my, now you're just manipulating and then if you buck it, we work the use of force, we go a, a different level. And it was just, it cons was consuming me. Well, one night in a little trailer house that was ate up with black mold, we were living there, out of one of my, I've heard God and led my family into, a, it was a good setting, but it was a, a hard setting. Uh, we were with good people, but I just didn't hear from God. It's amazing what you will claim, well, I know this is God. It's not God. This was not God. But listen, well, why didn't Jody speak up? She wasn't the Jody you've known. She didn't have a voice then. I had the voice. Now, I never told her, you don't have a voice. I never did that. But she was raised, you don't have a voice. And when she got with me, matter of fact, she, she grew more voice just because I had a lot of self-confidence. Well, that helped her. But then I went into some bondage that just out of, ooh, don't rock the cradle was her, I, you know, thought, don't, don't rock the cradle. So you just go along and you just trust God and believe God through the process. Anybody with me here? But you love your husband. You're praying for your husband. Man, she did that. So I took us, I took us out of a, a beautiful home, corner lot, biggest lot. It was beautiful. It was, it was, it was a miracle that we got into it. And God, God did it right here on, right here the, on a Wednesday night through a, a realtor and got us in it. And, and I got us out of it. And I moved us out into the boonies, into a single wide trailer house that was ate up with black mold. We moved the family that was in it out. And I mean, we worked like Cubans. <laughs> and, uh, we got out there and one night I was just made conscious that's deeper than Jason that this is consuming me this level of rage and I, I went down the hallway I got in the floor of that, that hallway and I started taking some things to the Lord of <clears throat> some of this perversion and torment and this anger and I mean I heard the Lord there's times you, he's so clear and he said this he said the problem is not anger the problem is rebellion what do you do well you don't just start bawling oh God I mean you get a season of that I went to the word I went to a good concordance and I looked up every scripture in the Bible with rebel, rebellion, anarchy scriptures, anti-Christ. We think anti-Christ, we think, you know, I mean, the anti-Christ. Anti-Christ just means you're resisting the anointing. If you are, listen to me, now, now don't close up when I say this, but this is completely scriptural backed. If you're resisting what the anointing of God is trying to do in your life, you are operating to some degree with not the Antichrist, but the spirit of Antichrist to reject and resist the anointing. That is anti-Christos, <laughs> anointing. It was, remember, it was to the church he wrote about the spirit of Antichrist, not the world. And I went through the Bible and I found every scripture with hate, hatred, hateth, wrath, anger, malice, maliciousness. And you know what I did? I found myself in those scriptures. 
Make no friendships with an angry man lest you learn his ways. I'm the angry man, Lord. An angry man digs up things and brings them up. Lord, I do that. You got to look in the mirror, saints. Bible calls itself a mirror. And it doesn't mirror to condemn. It mirrors to bring the, ha. Huh, that's the brazen labor. Oh. But then I get in the brazen labor and it has water in it and he washes me with the washing of the water of the word. It never condemns. Your mind, your heart will condemn you, but the word never condemns. That's why the law, it wasn't designed to work. It was designed to reveal sin, but that's why it couldn't cleanse us because all it could do is reveal sin and then its job's done. You're left just revealed. Just revealed. Whatever. Uh, you're a harlot. Law. There you go. Your covetousness. You're a thief. It was designed, but all it could do is reveal it couldn't heal. That's why none of us could be justified through the works of the law, because it could not give life. That's why he said the letter kills. How does it kill? It reveals, which just brings condemnation, and that's all it brings. You just... David said, every day I wake up, my sin is before me. He was living under the law. Even though he was a faith man, he was under law. And he said, every day I wake up, my sin is ever before me. Listen, I lived years right there in that spot. Before I was conscious that I was even awake, my sin was before me. Are you here? So I went to the word and I found the scriptures. And I began standing on those scriptures believe in God to set me free from rebellion from resisting pastor told me he said son when the Holy Ghost when the Holy Spirit is blowing in your life in your heart stop resisting him he said and just open your heart and let the spirit fill your cells and just go with him man that still gives me chills Look at somebody in love and tell them, open your sails. Open your sails. I got Benny. We got, open your sails, my man. Don't resist. Yeah, but I don't know where. You don't have to know. Trust me, it's good. Just open your sails. Sometimes it may go like this. But if he's the one going, I can trust him. I can trust him. If he's blowing me this way, don't get your paddle out. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Just, you got your little waders like we used to fish in tubes. <laughs> on, on those ankles. Man, I've wore lots of sets of those out <laughs> You get out on the bank, you're like, oh. boy, he's been working those glutes. Look at him. <laughs> you can trust him. Say, I can trust him. When, when, the, when the spirit of God, son, is blowing in your heart, don't resist him. He said, stop resisting him. You know why we resist? Because we're afraid. You know why we're afraid? Because we don't trust We may sing the song, I walk mm, by faith, mm, each step, mm, I faith, mm, to live mm, by faith. But can you sing it knowing what you're saying? I trust. That's what real faith is. Some, I, I walked up to the office door the other day and out of my spirit I said, if somebody asked you, in short, what is faith? 
what do you mean walk by faith? I would say acting on my convictions. That's, that's, what, that's what the doing of faith is. Faith is conviction. Some will say it's a force. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love is a force. Hate is a force. Manipulation with the spirit on it is a, brother, that's a force. Woo. Yes, it is a force, but out of my heart flows the forces of life or the forces of death. Faith is the evidence of what I don't yet, but I got it. It's a conviction. It's what makes me say, no, I'm not gonna do that again. Why? Because something in here burns. When I'm hurting and I go, I'm healed. It's past head. It's in here. It's the, boy, the Wycliffe said, it's what, it's the argument in me that puts its dukes up and says, ah, I'll live and not die. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So faith is the conviction. It's the burn. Listen, even when my head goes, I hope, or boy, I hope, down in here it says, I know. I'm telling you, faith, you see how I'm saying? Faith will make you grit your teeth. That's faith. That's not understanding. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. It's what yeah, make you grit your teeth. By his stripes. Ooh. That's faith. It's conviction. When something tries to take what you know God brought into you. Mm. F real faith is what, when you see the boogeyman's arm open the door up and you go, no you don't. That's faith. Hold the line. That's faith. And listen, it may start out with a little more. It starts out, it starts, uh, only the word can separate this from this. Only the word. It starts out, uh, uh, okay, I remember the pastor said, Say in the name of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Olive oil. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You start there. Your kids didn't start out, you buy them their first little bicycle. You didn't buy them no mongoose the first time. Them get on and go, endo, look here, dad. They didn't start out that way. They start out with training wheels all the way down. Back tire ain't even on the ground. And I mean, they think they're cool. And you think they're pretty daggum cool too. And you're riding right there with them. Ooh, baby Sherman, that's so good. They got off that bike. I don't need a helmet, Dad. Oh yeah, you need a helmet. I catch you without that helmet. I'm gonna give you five-fold ministry right here. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, right there, all at once. <laughs> Why? Because you know they're not ready. The measure's not been developed. Oh, all right. Yes. Yeah. You walking beside them. A little bit later, we're going to raise the training wheels a quarter of an inch. Now, listen, the back tire's touching. You're doing the same thing you were doing. Nothing's changed. You don't have more back now. You're just, the back is not developed. You've developed in confidence and trust. What am I saying? You have not more faith, but there's more faith working in you that I got this. Isn't that wonderful? And the same helper is walking beside you going, come on, 
Come on. He was going to make sure I don't fall. I'm not going to crack my head. I wear the helmet because he said, put the helmet on. Oh, that's good because he did. I got the helmet of salvation on. <laughs> but listen to me. Be, be assured of this, saints. If you have a pure heart, and that, only, that, that don't come by saying, and I do. That comes by staying in God's prayer. Every man speaks well of himself, the Bible says. If you have a pure heart, chick, <laughs> you probably don't. <laughs> but if you live before the presence of God, it will bring you to that place of pureness of heart. Listen to me, listen. Stop fearing that you're gonna get out of his will or miss his will. He won't let you. You may get into error even for a season. I'm not pointing, man, I have my own, but when Justin, full of the Holy Ghost, just, he's a maverick type personality, and I like that. I am too. But I'm going, I, I'm gonna cut my own freaking trail, man. Real quick, pull Psalm 139. Verse one in the NLT, please. Let's read the first four or five verses. Listen, and I've asked him before, but I, I, I love it. Justin, when you were out on that water drinking and taking pills, was the Holy Ghost there with you? I don't know Miss Connie's whole story, but I know you got away from maybe the things of God, but let me ask you this. Could you ever get away from God? No. Nope. Psalm 139, verse one. I'm gonna close the iPad. It's all good, I promise. Listen here, uh, NLT, please. We'll just read this real quick so we can get them. Ready? Uh, yeah. Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. Next verse. You know when I sit down and stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna say even before I say it, Jehovah? Yeah. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too great. It's too, it's too mega yeah. is the word. It's too megas for me to understand. I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. He's not saying, I could never. He's saying, I can't. I, I can't. It's impossible. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down, and accurate, a little more accurate says, if I make my bed in Hades, you're there. You're right there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. He's saying, if I get as far away from you as I can, even there. Let me tell you something. Jonah said, I hate the Ninevites, and I'm not going to go minister to them. They don't deserve your mercy, God. That was Jonah's attitude. They don't deserve your mercy. And he went down to Tarsus. He went down, and he found a ship going down to Tarsus and he got on the boat and went down into the bottom of the boat and it went down to Tarsus and God prepared here's mercy a great fish that swallowed Jonah now listen to me real careful this is a big prophetic picture you learn something here Jonah is a man out of the will of God under the law, old covenant, where it's just the blood of bulls and goats that cannot remove sin. It just puts it off, atones it for a year. You've never lived there. And we can all say, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but think of where Jonah's at. He's, he's a man out of the will of God, out of by choice, the known, revealed, spoken will and word of God. There's no mediator between him and this God. 
Day of Atonement's still a long way off before your sin can be covered and put off. Therefore, in theory, he's a spiritually dead man out of the will of God and you read what he wrote and it's the, he said, I went down to the bars and the gates of Hades. He died. He di His body was preserved in that fish. His spirit and soul went to hell. And he said the weeds, study weeds. I'm not talking about carpet grass. He said the weeds wrapped around my neck. The, the, thy billows were screaming at me. The bars and the gates, I heard them. Out of the belly of hell I cried and you heard me. And God, he said, he said, I will pay the vows that I vowed and said I would, God. And your Bible says, and mercy spoke to that fish and it vomited Jonah up. Listen, not out in the middle of the sea, on dry land. His spirit, body was puked up, his spirit and soul met it again, and he said, I'm headed to Nineveh. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? He said, taxi, taxi, Nineveh, yeah, yeah, oh, this is my taxi here, you find your one. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? <laughs> Isn't that good, Bob? He said, taxi. <laughs> Are you with me? Man, you pull that like like the moment you show that leg, you get a ride. You know, <laughs> not this leg. You put a leg. Wow! <laughs> but I'm just saying, isn't that wonderful? God didn't leave him there. Why? God knew his heart. David said, "If I make my bed in hell, Jonah did." Listen, he's a picture of Christ. Christ. Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. See, he was painting the picture. So, stay obedient, my friends. <laughs> I don't always go to Nineveh, but when, I, when the Lord tells me, I, I, I do, I go to Nineveh. <laughs> whatever that commercial is. <laughs> you followed me. I don't always make my bed in hell, but when I have, he's delivered me. <laughs> Stay deliverable, my friends. Yeah. You can trust him. He, he's for our good. Now listen, there's been some seasons that I... Only in 2021 did I come right to the threshold of you believe that, Jason? I mean, honestly, do you believe this? Because when you look at, you can't do that. Are you with me? I mean, look at, you, know, you can't do it. Abraham focused not on her womb is dried up and I haven't had a sperm count in years. But God said and listen to me I want to, I want to say something it was not just well it couldn't be because it came through Moses but on our side, it wasn't just, you know, some random scripture. What God said, mm -mm, in those settings, you got to know God said. Oh, your word. You have faith at that point. Well, listen, right quick. Faith comes by hearing. We all know this. And hearing by the what? One more time. The word of God. This is what it literally says. Faith 
comes by hearing the living utterance of the anointing. Now that's different than just reading letters. Faith is there, but faith, listen, such as this. I'm gonna write a $10,000 check by faith. All right, listen. Let's, let's chew on that just for a second. First of all, the only way you can write a $10,000 check by faith is you've heard from God. Because faith comes when you hear. If I hear, write a check for $10,000. You better know be God, I ain't got $10,000. I'm just gonna say, but let's say I'm writing a check. I've heard God. If Josh says, praise God, I'm gonna get in on this giving anointing. Okay, that's okay. But to what measure you get in on it, you gotta hear God. Same thing. I know that God's leading me, whatever, to, to give you this Colt 1911. Brother, you, you know I heard from God if I'm gonna slide, slide off a... And I've done it four, five, six times. Why? It's something I had. I didn't have $10,000. I'd have $10,000 if I didn't have so many 1911s, but no. <laughs> I'd rather have the 1911. I can't throw dollar bills at you. I can put a 40 pound hole in your heart though. No. <laughs> Are you with me, anybody? <laughs> Here, man, I'll pay you not to mug me. Oh, you don't want money? Here. <laughs> Come on, stay up. <laughs> You can't say some of these things to the Sunday morning crowd. <laughs> Wednesday night, you, people are like, mm, yeah, I get you, man, I get you. <laughs> Plug the fool, not really. <laughs> but listen, if I said, I, I believe the Lord would have me do that, I'll be blessed for it. One, listen to me, it's more blessed, I'm already blessed. It's more blessed when you're able to than it is to receive the gift. But you may say, man, Brother Jay gave that 1911 away, gave that 1911 away, gave that 1911 away, gave one to the highway patrol, gave, I'm gonna give all mine away too. And you go home and you, you, you gather all your, little, your 1911s up like chicks and you say, be blessed. Be blessed, be blessed. And now you're gunless. And you're knocking on my door saying, <clears throat> you, you got an extra gun like a boy. <laughs> and, you, and you go like this, you go. We've had no harvest off that. I mean, pastors got cigs and more cigs and more cigs and more cigs. 1911s. We did the same thing he did. We ain't, we're gunless. Listen, I've done this. We were 3821 Crest Ridge and were black moldless. Why? I didn't hear God. I'm t I don't speak from experience on this. So don't, I'm not, don't, don't think we've had it all together, man. And you idiots just need to learn how to hear God. No, it ain't like that. I've been the idiot more than I've heard God. You learn to hear God. That's why I've learned, right quick, wrap that up. Listen, one heard, had faith, one didn't. One had assumption, had presumption, and had willingness, but didn't have rhema. And faith comes by hearing and hearing from the what? That word, word is not logos, it's rhema. It comes when you've heard 
the living utterance of God. Now, a lot of times, most of the time, rhema comes as I'm in the Logos. I'm in the Logos and rhema comes. One of them scriptures jumps off the page and it goes, boom, and you go, ooh, I got it. But always remember, rhema always submits to Logos. Logos never bows to rhema. In the, it don't, it's not in the beginning was the rhema. In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with God. And the Logos was God. And the Logos was made flesh. And Logos spoke. And when he, Logos, spoke, they said, didn't his rhema burn in our hearts? Logos burns when it becomes rhema. And when you got something in you that goes, you got rhema, but you got it from Logos. Isn't that wonderful, Don? You got the word on it. So, uh, you, that, that's what we were saying, I think, is uh, you have to, you hear God on it. Now, we're not talking about redemptive matters. Well, he got healed by standing on healing scriptures. I, I got healed. Had a growth on my body in, in, in a place you don't want growths. I'll just put it that way. Man parts. A growth. I mean, went to Dr. Locklear, and if you ever knew Dr. Locklear, he was old school. He, he man, he, he worked cows for a living on the side. And he worked my man parts like it was a cow. And, and, and he, he about got knocked out in his doctor's office as, as a full-time pastor. And, and I'd have come right after that, I'd lay hands on him and come to church and preach on love because he squeezed me real hard and I couldn't even walk. It was all I could do to get in his office. You're going to laugh, Doreen. I'm telling you, but girl, that's true. I'm telling you how the cow ate the cabbage, man. I'd been sitting in... I'd been sitting in a bathtub with hot water. They said, just sit in hot water. Stay with me. Just to get it, get that part to float, to take the weight off. Dude, I was in so much pain. Pastor Ken told me, son, go home. I walked in the back door like this. I said, come on. I don't know what's going on, man. I'm hurting so good. Anyway, I went to Dr. Locker. He said, no, let me check it out. He said, Wah. I said, fool, what you <laughs> You ever been knocked out in your doctor gown <laughs> in your own office? <laughs> Listen, I went to the Bible. I'm glad y'all laugh. I pray you don't come up with a knot. <laughs> don't go to Dr. Locker. <laughs> I went to the Word. Well, went to the Word. Are you with me, somebody? I'll let y'all talk about where you've had some, some things come up on your body next service. <laughs> We've all had a thing or two. <laughs> One of the things, and I didn't have hemorrhoids, it was worse than that. The Bible says we've been redeemed from hemorrhoids. You, you don't thank God that you, for them scripture says I've redeemed you from hemorrhoids till you've had hemorrhoids. A lot of mamas may not admit it, but they got hemorrhoids from pushing babies. Can any woman in here give me an amen? I won't look at who it is. I'll go back later and look at all the hands. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Stretch marks. Permanent scars. If your baby ever said, Mommy, you're putting on a little bit of weight. He said, Come here, fool. <laughs> you see this mark, all these spider webs? You cause that. <laughs> Caleb told me one time, this was years ago, he said, boy, Dad, you getting a little gray. I said, look at me. <laughs> you caused most of this. <laughs> he said, oh. <laughs> I said, you know what? Enjoy that rooster red beard. I once had that too. So I got a little bit of Hannah Bar left. It once looked like Dusty's. <laughs> I mean, cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> anyway, I went to the Word. I, I got on healing scriptures. I had an old Bible, 
and I cut every one of them out. I, I am the Lord your God who takes sickness away from you. I cut it out and I, I took a little medicine jar, one of them old tamlins with the white lid and, and I, I had that thing full of healing scriptures. Everyone, and I wrote on there, take three, three times a day, finish the prescription. Everybody say finish the prescription. <laughs> I would sit in that bathtub, man. To, to, it, it was swollen up big and, it, and I would just try to get the, it hurt so bad. And I'd draw that water and I'd sit in there and I'd put that medicine bottle beside the, beside the bathtub and I would, I would open that thing up and I'd, by his stripes I am healed, Isaiah 53, three through five. Father, I thank you. God, oh, man, I thank you that, see you can't, this is not gonna tell you the truth. This is gonna tell you it's getting bigger. Your daddy had this. Listen, my daddy, I'd say, my daddy didn't know what I know. I'm not saying I'm smarter than my daddy. I'm just saying he don't, he don't know what I know. Lord, I'm the willing and I'm the obedient, best of my knowledge, and I will eat the good of the land. And growths, bumps, tumors, lumps ain't good. And the good hand of God is upon me. And Father, I thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. And I'd sit in that war, I'd pull another one out. First Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes you were healed. Father, I thank you that I am healed and I were healed. I would do that. I did that for several days. Listen to me. And all of a sudden I hit a certain day and I noticed that growth smaller. It wasn't gone. But listen, that's not when you back off your healing scriptures. That's not when you throw the bottle away. You gotta finish the prescription. It's like, I've not always been the best with antibiotics. I like to spread them out. That, I might need them down the road if I can take a few that you put them. At. So, it, you know, I take one, take two, take about that third one. I'm like, I think I'm feeling better. I got this kick. Now I'll put those up. I might need it down the road. Look at all the nurses are going, mm. Shelby, is that smart? I'm, t I'm talking to Shelby. Not really. Before you know it, I'm like, <coughs> man, it still hurts to, to swallow. Huh? Spirit of Antichrist, Spirit of Antichrist, 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 Antichrist. <laughs> I thought, man, uh, I'm gonna go get, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Babe, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Uh, uh, man, it hurts to swallow. Did you finish your antibiotics? I'm gonna go get some DayQuil. Well, you, <laughs> where's your antibiotics? Never been in my bathroom. And, in, and every time they'll tell you, finish the prescription. How many, listen to me. How many have you ever done that with the word? Or? Oh yeah, see, everybody was laughing at me a second ago. Now ain't nobody in the house laughing. It's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> finish the prescription, pastor, finish it. <laughs> oh. How many of we read a scripture that talks about once relief came. I mean, we come in, we're the first one when the door, we're in the parking lot, listening to praise and worship, doors ain't even open. The usher opens the door, morning, we're the first one in, in our seat, pen in hand. I mean, we're worshiping. Every word the pastor says, we write down. I'm talking a spiral per message. We're giving, we're even given an offering at times. I know, I know, I know. They give an altar call, I'm first. I don't even need what they gave the altar call for, but I want hands on, hands on. <laughs> Are you with me? 
They needed somebody to set up bounce houses. I'm your man. Then they needed somebody to cook casserole. Hey, I'll try. I'm going to serve everywhere I can. Why? Because I need a breakthrough. Men's meeting, I'm there. Women's meeting, I tried, they won't let me in. So I'll just sit in the parking lot. At least I'm on the premises. There's, there's a blessing that comes with the, par- with the property. Kids church needed volunteer. I'm not your man. <laughs> but I still need the breakthrough. <laughs> and if you put me out there, I'm gonna need more breakthrough, <laughs> okay? And then, say it's 30 days, 60 days. I've not gotten breakthrough yet, but I can tell things are breaking. I mean, it, it's definitely getting better. I'm texting the worship leader, please sing that song, keeps on getting better. Sing it. That's like my theme right now. I mean, y'all are singing about me. That's going on in my life. So it, it keeps getting better. Before you know it, breakthrough has come. I'm a free man. Fremont. I'm a free man. <laughs> when that guy in the movie was going to get a tattoo and he, in a foreign country and he wanted free man. And he come out and it was backwards and they had, they had tattooed Fremont. He was walking around. <laughs> it's important to finish the prescription and stay with what got you there. It's so important. You don't want to, uh, don't keep it number one. I'll say it that way. Seek first the kingdom and his way of acquiring. I want you to be encouraged as we close that You stay with God. You stay with his word, Logos. Rhema comes. You stay, stay in your church family. That's not a religious thing. I, I don't say that as a religious thing. Stay in church. I'm not going to stay in that church. <laughs> I want to stay with Church is a, an American word, an English word. Let's just say it this way. Stay with the called out that are heading in a direction that you want to go. That's ecclesia, the English translation, church. Jesus said upon this rock that I'm the Christ, I will build the called out. I like what Cato said in that men's meeting. I, I saw some men what, that were heading in a direction that I didn't know how to get there, but I liked what I saw. And I wanted to get out. And, and now he says every Thursday morning, stay on the bus. And look at the rewards, little by little, that come from just staying on the bus. There's something that happens just by default. I know this heart. A man told us today, and I'm only repeating it because I have said it. There's times I don't even want to leave. Listen, 2021, I didn't want the service to end because I knew at amen what was gonna hit me before I could even get everybody told I love you and bye. I knew the torment that was coming. You ever been there? And before I'd get home, right there, be doing all I could do to ward off the fears and the 
the lies and the, the assault, man. Be up all night working principles, listening to wisdom, battling hate. Are you with me, anybody? Service time come Wednesday. You wonder, how in the world am I going to do this? I don't have anything to give. Even though you've been doing what you've been doing for years that brought you to the point of it's time to get free now. But you feel like, I don't have anything. I'm empty. That's when you're at your best. When I am weak, then I am strong. And some by nature, when you get on the property, ooh, the service garment that we all have for service, it comes on you. And for a minute, you feel like spiritual Superman in your own area. I mean, you're not Clark Kent. You know what I'm saying. You just feel like, oh, oh, I can breathe. The, the spiritual waterboarding is stopped for a minute. You minister like fire, man, because it's going on in you. You're preaching out of overflow. That's what we're doing tonight. Just what's working in you, you're preaching it out of overflow. You're sowing it and you're watering it. And always remember this, there's see, sometimes you go through where you're sowing and watering and you're watching the field grow the harvest. Seems like faster than you are and you're the one sowing the seed. But really it's going on in you or you couldn't sow it. You couldn't sow it with effectiveness and passion. But I just want to say that to say, eventually, all things work together for your good and you're on this side of it and the storm's gone and you look back and you go, when I talk about that, I don't feel the hate even though I can tell you about it. I don't feel the murderous spirit driving my words when I say it no more. It's like I'm telling you about something that I watched somehow. I mean that before God. I don't, I can tell you, man, I so full, but I don't feel the, uh, the want to inflict. That's not there. It's, it's like, yeah. I remember asking Justin, we were sitting in the pickup one day, and I said, when this happens, I said, with you, does, how do you do that? And he said, because I'm free. That's all he said, because I'm free. I mean, I've been in this so much longer, it don't matter. Principle or principle? Because I mean, a few years ago, I was the one encouraging. But then I was sitting in the truck in that hard season, I said, what? How? Oh, he said, because I'm free. I said, Geez. really, he said, I said, it don't even try, try to, he said, mm -mm. that made no sense to me, man, because this was a, a, clo a, a familiar in some way, except mine was built on lies. It wasn't reality. And Jody helped me with that. Jason, he really walked through that. You didn't. Yours was based off of a lie you believed. And I would bring something up in my anger. Yeah, but you remember when, I remember when Pastor walked through that and his wife, and, and, and they did that. And, and Jody, real calm, she said, he really walked through that, Jason. His wife really did that. We're not talking about Miss Dawn. We're going way back. She really did that. Yes, she did that to him. Yours didn't. That's all based on a lie you believe. You can believe something so long that by God, that's the way it happened. You believe that. Am I right? I mean, I'm asking you, I know that's true. 
That's the way it was. I, and you, when you did that, and it never happened. And she would say that. She would let me talk. Then she would say, they really went through that, baby. Whatever. Back in, I, if I used yours, yeah, Bob, not with Connie, but yeah, Bob walked through that. Yeah, not with Bob, but yeah, Miss Connie really, really was treated like that. But Jason, that's what you're believing? That's all based on something that the enemy's twisted up here. You didn't walk through. That. I'm going to tell you what. That pulls a little bit of the fight out of you. And you're like, this is all based on deception. So you start walking it that way as though you have gone through that. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? But he said, because I'm free. I remember telling him, I said, we've had this saying for years, but I looked at him in serious and I said, I want to be free. That's a pastor of a church. 2021 in that area, I want to be free. Listen, man, in that area, in every area, that's where it starts. Lord, I want to be free. I want to be free. And listen to me. I know that this too shall turn for my deliverance, and it did, for my salvation. Changed me, changed her. It changed me as a man, it changed the church. It changed me as a dad, changed me as a husband, changed me as a friend, changed me as an overseer. Brought humility. Justin said something today. He says a lot of just country bumpkin simple things, and that's why they're so dadgum powerful. I'll lay out an exegesis, a Greek exegesis, that survey for an hour and 29 minutes and get in a men's meeting and he'll say something like, You're a lot more attractive, not talking to me, but about men in general, as a husband. You know, you're a lot more attractive when you're humble. He said that today. We was leaving, went to eat like at 2.30, lunch, or 1.30, they close it too. And we're walking, I mean, and, and he was walking out and he's talking about what all God's doing in, in, our, in a brother's life and our lives and the church's life and people are, things are turning y'all, I'm serious, there's people having turned, you just stay with it. There's like three or two or three majors, one today major. And, and we're just not talking about this brother, but talking about just working the word and just, we was walking out and he said, you know you're, talking about your own life, you're a lot more attractive when you're humble and I thought, man, it take me an hour and a half to say that. He said, you know, Kelsey's a lot more attracted to humble Justin. Isn't that true? And as a man, as us husbands, I'm far more attracted. I mean, she's hot, don't get me wrong. But I'm far more attracted to that virtuous spirit. That's what I trust. I don't trust the hair, the eyes, the makeup, all I trust what lives in that shell. I'm, I'm a, I trust virtue. That's what Proverbs 31 says. The heart of her husband will trust in her. And I'll never forget when I, because we've had three different majors. We've been married 30, coming up on 32 years. And I mean, we're, I mean, I'm telling you, the glory of God filled our bedroom and married us one night. We buried our old rings and some sand from one of our favorite beaches and, and we buried them and that's where they've stayed for years, buried in that sand and, and we got new rings and, and all that. But I mean the glory of God just purged me one night. I spent days, I couldn't, I just stare at her because I was receiving, I finally was able to receive, listen, what had always been being dished out to me. But I felt like this is brand new. And it's like, 
Man, she's coming along. She's finally loving me back. <laughs> no, this, she's been doing this from day one, but you weren't able to receive it. But when God set me free, I couldn't do nothing for days. I, I just stare in her eyes, laying in bed, I just stare. Just big old tears just rolling down my face. What was happening? I was being cleansed, washed. I'm going to tell you, God is love, and love is what does every bit of that. That's what keeps you coming back to the Word, coming back to the Lord. Let's stand on our feet. I've held you long. I love you. You know we love each other. We've prayed. We've, we've, we've done it all. Only thing left to do is dismiss and be safe in the parking lot, and don't forget your cheering. <laughs> be safe. I pray you got something out of tonight. I love you. God bless you.